what's up YouTube, it's ICU, and in today's video I have something very exciting to talk to you guys about related to iOS 13 and jailbreaking. A TFP0 patch has been achieved which will be useful in the creation of a semi-untethered jailbreak, one that's compatible with A12 and A13 powered devices. So this is absolutely fantastic. All right, so let's get into it. First and foremost, I wanted to mention that if you guys have yet to bookmark my A12 and A13 jailbreak status checker page, be sure to do so, linked down below in the description. This no will change to a yes once the jailbreak is out for those devices. And this can also be viewed as the status checker page for when a semi-untethered jailbreak is going to be out. They're basically going to be one and the same. So, Quickly, I also wanted to talk about iOS 13.3 itself, because remember, I told you guys previously that iOS 13.3 patches two key kernel vulnerabilities that can be exploited and potentially will lead to a jailbreak. That is still the case, but guess what, guys? Apple has stopped signing iOS 13.2.3, so it joins the ranks of unsigned iOS 13 IPSWs. So unfortunately, you can no longer downgrade back to iOS 13.2.3, which was the last iteration of iOS 13 that contains those key vulnerabilities. So iOS 13.2.3 and lower are your best bet of being able to jailbreak as soon as possible, even though I said that a TFP0 patch has been achieved on iOS 13.3, which as of recording this video is the latest public firmware, your best bet is still lower than that because don't get it confused, a TFP0 patch is not the same as a kernel exploit. So it's my bet that it was demoed and billed as an iOS 13.3 TFP0 patch simply because it will also work on all lower firmwares as well, including iOS 13.2.3 and below, which are susceptible to those aforementioned vulnerabilities that are so very important. So that will likely be the target firmware for a jailbreak unless new kernel vulnerabilities are dropped for 13.3 and up whenever that happens to be. So this is just one step in the process, one link in the chain, and more is needed for the development of a jailbreak utility. And at this point, there have not been any publicly disclosed iOS 13.3 kernel vulnerabilities, which will undoubtedly be required for the development and subsequent release of a jailbreak. I'm going to reiterate that once more. We need a kernel exploit for anything that is not the check rain jailbreak. Anything that is not that semi-tethered jailbreak that provides a permanent jailbreak for A11 and lower, we need a kernel exploit. And right now, we only have kernel vulnerabilities for iOS 13.2.3 and lower in the wild. That's not to say that 13.3 doesn't contain any vulnerabilities. It certainly does. They're just not public yet. Yet. and they're going to need to be made public before they can be exploited and rolled into a jailbreak of any kind. And again, it's unclear whether or not that will happen and whether exploits will be released and therefore a jailbreak will be developed and ready to go before new vulnerabilities for 13.3 and up drop. So your best bet, this is a long-winded way of saying this, your best bet to be able to jailbreak is to stay as low as possible. Heck, even if you're on 13.3, once 13.3.1 drops, just do not update. Don't update, stay wherever you are until you have definitive confirmation that a jailbreak is going to be released for a higher targeted firmware. If and when that is the case, then and only then should you update. But moral of this is to just stay as low as you possibly can. Ideally, you're on iOS 13.2.3 and below. Okay, so with that crucial information out of the way, let's go ahead and switch over to what we're talking about today. What is new? This Twitter user by the name of 08TC3WBB essentially tweeted out a very important video earlier this morning actually highlighting a TFP0 patch on an iPhone XS Max. We're going to get into that video and break it apart in just a second, but first, I've been referencing it throughout this video. What the heck is a TFP0 patch? Well, essentially, in the kernel, task for PID is a function that allows for a privileged process to get a task port from another process on the same host, except for the kernel task process. Now, a TFP0 patch removes that restriction, and essentially, 
It is then used to apply VM read and VM write to modify the kernel VM region. So you might be wondering, well, what the heck does that mean? Essentially, it allows for read and write access to the VM segment of the kernel through task ports. And to simplify it even one step further, it allows for read and write in the kernel memory, essentially. And this is very important and useful because it enables applications running as root, so with full system access to essentially read and write to the OS's kernel, which again, like I've been saying, is key. It's not a full-fledged kernel exploit, however, and as I've said, more is still needed. Essentially, TFP0 is the first step or the precursor to achieving read and write access, which in itself is paramount and the main thing that is required for a jailbreak that is not based on a lower level exploit like a boot ROM exploit, which is what Checkrain is built on. So this video, which is tweeted out by the aforementioned Twitter user, who is, by the way, followed by Hacker Pwn to own, among others, essentially just seems to be launching the settings application, going inside of general, followed by software update, and confirming that the device is in fact on iOS 13.3, and then going down into privacy, analytics, and improvements, and showing that there are no current crash logs, and then loading the news application successfully, going through the actual TFP0 patch itself, and then launching up the news application. It crashes, then going back inside of the settings application under that same crash log section and showing that there is now a crash log for news. Now you might be saying, well, what the heck does this mean? Why is it even important at all? On first glance, it seems like it's nothing too special or extraordinary. Well, let's take it back a second and let's actually look at what they're doing. So first of all, they're proving that this is on the latest public firmware and then showing that there are no current crash logs, loading up news, showing that it works just fine, running through the exploit and subsequent patch, which if we actually slow this down, this is where things get interesting. So it appears as though unrestricted root access is achieved and then the news application is accessed and then a patch is applied and it essentially changes the registers value to zero X and then sixes. And this is unusual for a crash log to display these type of registers. So this is not typical. And then they close out the application crashes, goes inside of the crash log. And then if you slow this part down as well, you can see that those registers have been changed and modified. So this is really actually some very cool stuff, guys. And like I said, this is a link in the chain to enable a jailbreak, not only a jailbreak for A11 and lower, but like I said, something for newer devices as well, and something that's also semi-untethered. Hacker Pwn to Own has already confirmed that once a kernel exploit is made available, he is going to set to work on updating Uncover to actually be available for iOS 13 and to function on newer devices. So this is some fantastic stuff, guys. Like I've been saying, I'll keep you guys fully updated and notified and in the loop every single step of the way. So be sure to subscribe if you have yet to. And uh, yeah, guys, exciting stuff to come. Hopefully we'll get a jailbreak for all devices, not just up to the iPhone 10 shortly. And until next time, this is ACU signing out. And also because it's relevant, we're going to play a clip from my iOS 13.3.1 beta video and where I actually show that jailbreaking is possible with Checkrain. So if you want to see more of that video, it's linked in your cards as well as down below in the description. I just want to win. All right, so to start off, I just want to show you guys that this iPhone is already on iOS 13.3.1 inside of settings general about for the software version there, which again will come in handy when I show you guys that, yeah, you can jailbreak 13.3.1. First and foremost, we basically just need to enter recovery mode. And now that we are inside of recovery mode, Checkrain now prompts us to continue. So I'm going to click on start and it's going to tell us exactly how to enter DFU mode. So let's go ahead and click start to that and we'll just follow the steps on screen 
as usual. So now I'm going to just release that side button and continue holding volume down. I found that, again, you don't want to hold side and volume down together for quite as long as it says inside of check rein because sometimes it uh, actually doesn't work as it should and it will actually kick you out of DFU mode and just show an Apple logo. But at any rate, you can see here that now it is in the process of rebooting. It's already exploited the device and uh, the boot ROM has a Again, been pwned and we are about to boot into our jailbroken state. At this point, the device is already jailbroken. We won't have Cydia since this is the first time jailbreaking, but we'll just be able to install Cydia with CheckRain.